obviously, these, these tools are cool. You know, they're able to solve problems. So I do like to use my millennials. Actually, I'll use my nieces and nephews as an example. My husband and I were out walking in Colorado, and we were having a, a heated discussion about the use of cash. And yeah, it's pretty boring when you're talking about the use of cash. <laughs> anyway, he said, <laughs> he said, well, people aren't just going to still use cash. And I said, I think it's this next generation where it's changing. So I said, let's, let's just go ask them. So we all went out to dinner, and we asked the nieces and nephews, OK, do you guys ever use cash? And there was this sort of, what are you talking about look? And we said, OK, well, tell us what you use. Well, that's when they went down the suite of products. This particular Cadre Venmo was their favorite, because when they went out with friends, then they could all pay their portion, you know, and how cool was that? But for mom and dad, where they, in this case, they had to do a rental payment to mom and dad. They used Zelle, because mom and dad wanted to use Zelle, since that's tied to a traditional bank. But they were not cash users. They just were not cash users. So they have a lot of options. Of course, not everybody is set up to take that payment electronically. So smart companies, like Square, are also offering cards that you can use in the event that you want to do that whole old swipe thing. So that's available as well. This last summer, my husband and I went to Ireland. And you know, it was really amazing. We did not buy a euro. And in Northern Ireland, we did not buy, um, get any, any funds in UK because we didn't need to. Every merchant that we went to, including the rural merchants, took electronic payments. And we could decide whether we wanted to do it in the euro or whether we, the euro in, in uh, the Republic, the pound in, North, in Northern Ireland, or in US dollars. And usually the merchants would say, use dollars today, or use, you know, use whatever the best exchange rate was. <laughs> Fascinating, right? So that gives you a sense of where the world is, not just the US. We have a question over here? Are you concerned about? You want to turn your mic on? Thank you. Are you concerned about the security of these payment systems? Yeah, OK, guys, are you, are you concerned about the security of your payment systems? <laughs> Yeah, well, you should be secure. You should be, um, although I think there definitely have been some advances. I think two and square on yours. You tokenize your payments. You don't send a, a number, no. right? You're sending that cash. So um, I'm going to translate that in just a minute. But <laughs> this time I'm going to use Apple as the example. So if you use Apple Pay, Apple does not transmit your number, your credit card number. They will transmit a number that they have. It's called a token. It is related to your credit card number. It translates to your credit card number, but it is a, it is a uh, different identity. So from the standpoint of some of the old issues we've had, skimming numbers and pulling that information, there have been some advances. The thing that you can't look past, though, is electronics are electronics. And this question of nation state actors, the threat environment, the ability to get into systems, or even, as you may have read, the Capital One breach, um, which had to do with the configuration of a firewall on the part of, of the particular banking organization, almost blocking and tackling, if you think about it, that stuff still happens. So yes, you should be concerned. The question, though, is, is it just a matter of the fact that we still have maturity in our electronics, or is it just inevitable that that's going to be the future?